Hey guys, Alexey from Ace5 Studios and today we're gonna be doing a camera animation tutorial. I have an old one called Camera Animation 101. It's very popular but it's terribly recorded and I think we can do better. So in this tutorial here, I'm gonna go over uh, how I animate cameras and just the important things. So basically to cut to the chase, if your camera animation looks something like this, then you need to watch this tutorial because I will help you make it look nicer. Um, that's not the right camera, this is the right camera. Whereas this one, as you can see, already looks much nicer. And in this tutorial, I'll go over how to set up a rig to achieve a more realistic camera animation like this. Now you'll see if we actually play this back, there's still some things I don't like, but like you can tell the difference. If you, in this one, if you press play, well, it's too slow here, but basically you can feel it. It feels very 3D. Like there's, it feels like it's made in a 3D app and it doesn't have that kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. But if we switch to our new camera, keep getting the wrong one, you'll see it has a much more kind of natural flowing feel to it. There's still a lot of things I could clean up for, for this tutorial. I'm showing you the techniques. It already feels a lot more like an actual human is filming it or you know it's happening in a real world and it's not just all virtual so how do i achieve this well firstly we have to look at focal length so let's go back to our not so good camera and let's make a new camera here just as a test as a demonstration um, firstly you have to the default focal length on cameras is usually here an object is 36 and this straight away is like the, mo the one you're most used to seeing because it's the default everywhere. So when you see this, like you subconsciously go, oh, it's just a 3D render. You know, you don't really register it as an emotional feeling. Um, quickly about focal lengths. When you have a very long focal length, like for example, uh, you know, let's just, actually, let's start with the slow. When you have a short focal length, like let's say you have 20, the lower number you get, the more stuff you can see in the scene. And you use this focal length when you want, to, when you want the viewer to see where something is happening basically. Like when you wanna see all the other people in this shot, when you wanna see that it's crowded or it's empty, like is this guy standing alone or is there lots of people around him? Is he in a city, in a room, in a forest? Whatever it is, like we're used to, because of the films we watch, you know, TV shows, movies, commercials, we're used to understanding this. So when, the, when there's a wide angle, you can see a lot more, like naturally this how it started happening because people wanted to get as much of the scene as possible in if you're taking photos of like landscapes and stuff. And to show people the give them the widest field of view and the most information. However, if you put in something like 150, you're actually going to be focusing on just this one guy or just this one guy here, and uh, the rest isn't that important. And we can plug the focus onto him so the depth of field doesn't blur him out. And if you want to, you know, drop it to like two so you can see that, and the background doesn't matter anymore. Right now, you're just focusing on him or on an object or on a car or something. This is the important part. We want to see what he's feeling. We want to see his emotions. We want to see how he's dressed. We want to see what color the car is or what the number plate is. Basically, when you want some specific piece of information, you want to increase the, fo the focal length as high as possible. Well, not as high as possible, but like to about 150. Um, you can probably jack it up further, but to me, I've never seen the point of using more than 150. Usually, I think it's like 105 or it's just from knowing camera lenses, that's the values that I use. And here again, you you know, like when you look at this picture, you, you think, oh, what's this guy doing? Why is, what's he thinking about? And you can see that he's clearly the important part of this picture. But if we switch back to like 25, suddenly like he is in the middle, but it's a more of a, you're like, what are those people? Do they care? Are they important? You know, you straight away, you see that he's in a studio, you see the background, if there's cars or buildings or whatever it is. So this is the first thing to keep in mind. Don't forget to set your focal length. That's like a very important feature in camera animations. Um, the next point is you want pivot points because the problem with this bad camera move that we had here, this one, let's unhide it, is that it just kind of moves from point to point and it doesn't have, you know, it's not orbiting around anything. Like we like things that orbit. That's why planets orbit. That's why atoms, electrons, uh, molecules, why everything orbits. That's, you know, that's like why we like spinning around when, you know, like when you're a kid and you like when someone bigger is holding you and spinning you around in a circle. We like that feeling like humans love centrifuges. I don't know why we just we're like merry-go-rounds, Ferris wheels. We like going in circles. <laughs> it's our thing. We like to have a point in the middle and orbit around it. So that's why what I do is I create a, uh, 
I create a camera rig, which has that inbuilt. So let's start making a camera rig. This is our bad camera, let's hide it. So let's make a camera. And let's first place it where we want to start. Let's say we want to start around here somewhere. Make sure he's in the middle of our scene, just for the start. And actually, <laughs> we forgot to, don't forget to press this thing first. So we put this guy here and let's change our camera length. Since we're focusing on the product, since I'm, this is a product demonstration, I guess. Uh, let's make it like 80 because the others are still important, but this guy is the important part of this shot. This is what we want to be focusing on. So we have it set to 80. We can stick the doff down to like four. So there's a bit of, there's a bit of blur in the background. Let's make sure we got him as the focus point. There you go. And now what we want to do is we want to make a null. So let's go into our outside view here. Let's make a null, put him in the camera, press shift C, go PSR, reset PSR. And let's move this null forward now so it's where the character is. Now what you want to do is take it out of the camera and call this the main camera null. Now you want to copy this guy a couple of times. You want, this will be the height null and this will be the orbit null. So height null and orbit null. And then drop the camera in there. Now, as you can see, we have an orbit null. So we can orbit the camera in these nice arcs around our products. We have a height null, so we can adjust how high it's located. And we have a main camera null, which is responsible for moving the camera around the scene in a you know, simple way. Um, and actually what we want to do here maybe is we want to rotate this guy up a bit so he's, there you go, so he's over more straight. And now these guys are all straight and then the camera we can move this guy down a bit if we want a shot like this. And let's go back to the zero frame and let's select all of these guys and keyframe them all with this little key. So we have it at our start position. Um, also, uh, the F9 key is the shortcut key. So when I say keyframe, I'm just hitting that key on the keyboard. Actually, I'm doing it on my mouse. If you want, watch my tutorial about the Razer Naga with a whole bunch of shortcuts because that saves a lot of time and it's great when you have keyframe under your thumb. So let's start out. We have him here and let's start with the orbit null. So this orbit, we want it to go around him. And actually, we probably want to adjust the main null so that he's slightly more on center of this guy. There you go, keyframe there. And now we're rotating around the main guy. And what we want next is we want to, probably want to keep rotating him. So let's rotate him some more. But also during this rotation, we now want the main camera null to move to our new guy here. So let's keyframe it there. But we didn't keyframe him early enough because right now we're rotating. We want him to stay here for a while longer. So let's grab this first null and control drag it onto this position. So now we're rotating around him and then we move away. And here the rotation stops. We probably want the rotation to keep going. So let's rotate the orbit to keep on moving. And then when we move over to the next guys, we will move them. Let's move our null to the next people here. And we probably want this orbit to also keep on rotating. So we're now rotating around him there. We will also probably want to zoom in a bit here because otherwise we're hitting <laughs> the other object. But still, you can see now with the depth of field, we're focusing still clearly on the guy. So yeah, we'll want to zoom in, but we'll do that in a second. First, I want to just block out the speed and the move of this character of this camera. And the last move we want, we want him to still stick around on this position for a while. And then we want him to move towards the last guy, which is this guy. And we want to keep the orbit going as well. So let's just rotate him around. There you go. And now we have our general move blocked out. But you'll notice that it kind of stops at each one. Well, it doesn't stop there. That's actually a problem. That's something that we missed. We didn't stop at this guy. We want to orbit around him a bit. So let's control drag this key. So we copy it by control dragging. And then we want him to orbit around this guy. And then we want him to move to this guy at the end. Now, what I would also do is here, I would animate the camera moving in. 
So here is here, and then while we're moving in, I would zoom, I would zoom in on him and move up. And I would probably also change my focus distance to this guy. So now we're zooming in and then we're rotating around this guy. And here, for example, we need to adjust the height. So we've got our height now. And so here our height is still good. We find a place where the height is normal. And then while we rotate, here we want the height to be back to down here. And maybe actually start it here and then by the time, so here this is still, this height is still good, so keyframe it. And then by the time we get back to this guy, we need to move the height back up. And now we have our rotation and animations in the right place. And this gives us a nice kind of move. But what you notice here is also when we stop on these guys, it's kind of, it freezes. Like I don't like how when you start here, so it kind of stops and then it moves and then it stops. To fix this is we get our main camera now, we find these two keyframes, which are the same, and we just offset them. We go in here and we just move this guy a bit on the course of where it's meant to be going. And we go back to this one and we move him a bit back along the curve. And now we get this nice kind of blend between the two. So, whoops. Maybe we don't get enough rotation here. Let's drag this guy a bit in. So we stick around longer on rotating with him. There you go. Let me drag him even out. There you go. And now we don't have such a rough stick. And with this guy, maybe I moved him too much here. Let's see with this guy. So we want on this null, where it's still stationary, we want him to just move a little bit in the direction that he's going to be going. There you go. Maybe here we want to move him a bit back. So he's focused. And once we have this animation, now is basically the time when we can adjust uh, the last camera object. You basically keyframe this guy only when you need to do small adjustments. You don't want to do any big moves. So you just like, if you want a straight zoom, or if you want to slightly adjust the, for example, like here is fine, but here, I want him to be more here in the frame. So I just move it over and, and put a null, I mean, put a keyframe. And now he's more in the right. And here, for example, I don't like how he's disappearing off the side. So we can compensate the camera a bit to there. So he's not quite, but here, as you can see, we're already getting this, getting this wobble, and that wobble is not good at all. So let's remove this, and let's adjust this. When you get too many keyframes, it's not good. So let's get our main camera null, and let's, on this keyframe here, let's move them like here. So now we have our rotate around him and then we spin out into this guy and then we spin into the last one and that's basically the technique that I use and that's how I would animate a camera it's the same technique I used in my transformer and just generally like, you know whatever you're spinning around is this is you know this is my approach and also uh, like in this kind of scene it's okay to do one continuous move but try to split up your moves because in real life and if you like watch a movie you usually don't have such long shots usually your shots are pretty short like you have one you know you have one shot which is zooming in from above and then you have one camera animation example you'll have like mm, let's start from here again you'll have one shot for example when you're demonstrating these characters you'll have a camera and let's set it to like 20 focal length so basically so let's say you open up on a shot like this and it'll just be a camera move from here to say here it'll just be like a you know a sideways oops yeah. just be a sideways parallax move so it just moves across and you can see that this is where it's happening and then it'll cut to the next camera it'll cut to a camera where it's just orbiting around a guy or it's you know you have a lot more edits so then you hit cut to the next camera which is you know already here and it's just going around him and then you have one which is maybe zooming in from up high and one which is just like zoomed in on the face. So don't forget to edit more. Like don't have like one continuous shot is usually a bad thing. It's bad for uh, both. Like it kind of takes a person, like we're not used to seeing it because of the way movies are made. We're used to lots of edits and cuts. So we want, and also makes things more dramatic sometimes. Like you show a wide angle, you show a mid, -ang a mid like that. a wide angle shot, a mid angle shot, and then a, you know, a 
high, like a very high value. So you're like writing on the person and you see straight away you're informed of where you are and you see him a bit closer. You're like, oh, this is the important guy. And then you can see his emotions and while well, you're actually there. So, you know, it kind of brings in the focus. So don't forget to edit your shots. Don't, you don't always try to make everything in one long camera take. Like that makes everything look very 3D. You want more edits generally when you're, you know, when you're making animation. It also makes it easier to animate because sometimes when you're animating, you have your, your object has to do different animations in different scenes. And so you can use different rigs. So you don't have to use one heavy rig that can do anything, everything. You just use different rigs. And also you don't have to blend as much. Like for example, when you do character animation, if you're doing a walk cycle, you know, just do it in one frame and it's just a walk cycle and you don't have to blend it with any other animations. It's just a one shot of him walking and then the next shot of him doing something. And you don't have to work on the blend from the walk cycle to the action because that's always it pain to do. So yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. This is Alexei from Ace 5 Studios. Go check out my website for more free tutorials and some free rigs and these character rig packs. They're still $24.99 for a while, but I'm about to upload the new one, which will be refined and fixed. And then they'll be back to $49.95. And there's also the five man now available in three flavors. So you got the cheap one, the medium one, and the full one. And yeah, so keep an eye out. I'll be uploading more rigs and more tutorials. Also subscribe to me on Facebooks and Twitters and everywhere else where I exist to keep track of me. Okay, see you around.